Hey everyone, this is Justin from Frontly and for today's video tutorial, I will be walking you through some key features of our platform as I build out my own app. I hope by bringing these Frontly concepts together into a real life situation in one video, it will help you feel more confident implementing these features into your own app without the headache and reaffirm why Frontly's no code solution is the way to go. In this video, I will be showcasing specifically hidden form fields, hidden filters, the refresh block actions, and login actions. Now for our example today, we are going to build up two perspectives inside the same app, a student portal and an instructor one. As one component of the student portal I've built out today, students will be able to submit their research proposals and proposed presentation dates to their instructor, who on their end will receive the student's request, review their submission, update its status, and provide feedback and comments to the student as necessary. You'll notice that I've built up different parts of this app already. If the contents in this app are a little ahead of where you're at now in your Frontly journey, and you'd like to see how I got to this point, be sure to check out my next video where I'll go into the creation of these pages and blocks in greater detail. In preparation for my app, I've also created two spreadsheets, one for tracking logins, which I'll get into in the final part of my video, and another for logging student submissions. For the sheet I'm logging submissions for, take a peek at my headings. While you notice that I have a lot of columns on this sheet, you'll get to see how I can manipulate my forms, fields, and blocks in ways that will not overwhelm or clutter the experience for either of my user groups. Now, as I've stated for the student portal, students will be required to submit their project or proposals to the instructor before being approved of their date to present it. Going back to my student form, you can see there are some fields that aren't relevant for their submission or, uh, in some cases, they can be better automated. Prof or instructor feedback and status, for instance, can be removed from the student form because those form fields will be reserved for the instructor. The rest of the fields are fields I want to keep. However, student name, student email, and date submitted are fields that I want automated through a combination of hidden form fields and dynamic variables. The reason why I'm doing this is so I get consistency in how these submissions flow into my spreadsheet and it just helps create a cleaner experience for my users. So to do this, I will select the hidden field type when I edit the field, which will populate a hidden value field that will allow me to inject my dynamic variable into it by clicking this plus symbol. So for student name, I will want to use the first name user variable. For the student email, I'm going to be selecting the email user variable. And lastly, for the date submitted one, after picking the hidden field type, I'm going to select the today time variable. We'll be able to see these values surface in our live preview, but first I wanna add a custom action layer to my student submission that will be the new refresh block action. The Refresh Block Custom Action is a new custom action that allows you to refresh individual blocks as soon as a specific action is performed, like the submission of this form. I am going to create a step here that will allow the project status's block below refresh so users can see right away the status of their proposal submission. To do this, you'll want to go to the Advanced tab, click Submit Actions, choose the Refresh Blocks action, and select your block. Project statuses will be the one for us. With all that set in place now, the submissions from this form will flow into this block in real time. For the project statuses block, I've customized the columns or fields to only show the essentials, including the status field, which I've already set to pending earlier by default. Now let's give it a preview and do a live submission. Now that it's saved, I'm going to click on the live preview. And you can see I've already configured some of the custom styling on the side here. Um, I'm going to jump and start putting in a research topic that I've copied and pasted from earlier. Pick a random partner for this example. Let's just say it's Rob and a presentation date. Uh, I want to pick it to be sometime this month. So I'll just pick the 17th since the file upload um, setting here is optional. I'm not going to submit anything. And once I click the submit presentation proposal, you should see the project statuses block also populate with that submission too, with the status research topic and date submitted columns on display. When I jump over to the instructor portal now, as the instructor, 
I will be able to see the student submission come through in this table view. By clicking into it, I bring myself to a detailed view that I've set up earlier where all the student form entries, including the hidden field ones I've set up earlier, are coming through successfully. I made it so these submitted values cannot be edited, but what I have made editable for the instructor is the status field and the comments or feedback they'd like to share to the student. This research topic and presentation date works for me, the instructor. I will approve it. So far, everything is working as expected right now because there has only been one user who has submitted this form. However, a situation I don't want is one where another logged in student is able to see the submission of all of their classmates before they've actually been reviewed and approved by the instructor. On this block, I only want them to see their own submissions. Let's illustrate this example where I'm logged in as another student who is submitting their own proposal. Here, I am logged in as John Smith. You can see it by the email at the bottom here and the name at the top. You can already see from this table that they can see the submission of another classmate, which is not what I'm trying to achieve on this block. Now, just for demonstration purposes, I'm going to have the user John Smith submit their own form. And on the instructor portal this time, as it's coming through, I'm going to reject it. This is where hidden filters can be extremely handy in regulating the information that comes through a block that meets the criteria you set for it. Once again, my goal here is to create a filter in the project statuses block that will only make the user submissions visible to them. If you can recall when I used a dynamic variable in the field for the user's email, here's where this value becomes useful. To set this up under hidden filters for this block, I will add a filter where the student email value on my spreadsheet must equal to the logged in user's email. With all of that set up, I will save and refresh John Smith's app once more, and they should no longer see any other submission other than their own. Let's give it a test. Here, it is good to see now that there's only one submission in John Smith's page, and it's the one that they submitted. Since we're on a roll with hidden filters, there is another opportunity for me to set some more up in my calendar blocks. On the instructor page, I want the ability to see all the proposed dates that come through except the ones the instructor has already rejected. This will be a function for them to visualize the available presentation slots for their students. For the student page, I want the student calendar to show only events that have been approved by their instructor, just so they know their own confirmed presentation dates as well as their classmates. So with all of this in mind, when I go back to my edit mode, um, how I'm going to set up the filters on my calendar is I'm going to set up this new filter that states the status does not equal and rather than injecting a dynamic variable, I'm going to input a static variable of rejected. Then over to my student portal, because I want my students to actually see only their approved dates as well as their classmates, I'm going to configure this filter here on this calendar block to status must equal approved and save that with all of that done let's do another preview here to see if it worked so in this new preview here you can see that i've added some additional data points just to further illustrate what i'm trying to achieve with this calendar block um, in this instructor portal you can see that there have been a total of six submissions by the students now uh, four of which have only showed up on the calendar block. And that's because the two rejected submissions um, didn't make its way into the calendar. Now, when I switch over to the student portal, similarly, you do see the four approved project plans. So as a student now, if I were to click into any of these dates, 
I'd be able to see which confirmed dates are going to be presentation dates um, by either themselves or their fellow classmates. So it's good to see everything working here. And the final feature I'm going to showcase in this video today will be the login custom action. This is a feature that we are really excited to share, not just for this use case, but for any use case where an admin or manager will want to see the sign in times of any of their users, just as an overview of how active they are on the app or to even serve as a punch in clock if they so choose. On this app, you may have noticed uh, the last block on the instructor portal here called recent logins. As an instructor, I just want to see which of my students are regularly logging in to see the updates and announcements of shared. So going back to the start of the video, I created another spreadsheet called logins that will help me track this. Going back to that spreadsheet, these are my headers and the ones I'll likely want to surface in the app is the username and their login. Here's how I'll do this from the edit mode. For the first time in this video, I want to point you over to our users page. After you click into it, go to your sign up settings, click the user login action, and the step you'll want to add is the Google Sheet one, create or update a row in a Google Sheet. I'm going to select the login sheet, select keep the action type to create, and from here it's just all about inserting the same dynamic variables as I did previously. Username will will stick with the just the first name and the login time will be now. Once I save it and preview the app one last time, I should be able to see John Smith's most recent login um, into the instructor portal. Let's have one last look. After re-signing in with John Smith one last time. I'm going to scroll down and voila, there it is. There's the timestamp for um, their login. So if you made it all the way to the end to this video, thank you so much for listening in on this tutorial. Hopefully you've learned a little more today about how to use Frontly's hidden form fields, hidden filters, refresh blocks, and custom login actions in your app with some real life examples. Be sure to tune into our YouTube channel every week for more content like this. And if you have any questions, please reach out to our support channels. Have a great day, everyone.